Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Offbit. Now, on October the 25th of 2021, Windows 11 was released to the public. During its pre-release builds, there were rumors that Windows 11 would only run on Intel 8000 CPUs and Ryzen Zen Plus based processors, such as the likes of an Intel i5 8400 or the Ryzen 5 2600. These combined with the UFI booting and TPM 2.0 module prerequisites known as trusted platform modules, this leaving millions of computers in the lurch. Now, where does that leave millions of computers very much capable of running Windows 11, however, did not meet those requirements? Fortunately, Microsoft released Windows registry entry entries for the install so it would ignore those actual limitations. However, adding registry keys to the registry is not for the faint at heart. Now here at the Offbit, we've devised a simpler method to get this to work on almost any computer within reason. So this means Windows 11 should run on i7 6700s, i5 2400s, i3 550s, Core 2 Duos, AMD Athlon 2X2s, Phantom 2s, and the list goes on. And these steps can be done during an install of Windows 11, and we are going to show you exactly just how to do that today. So stick around after the rolling intro to find out more. Windows 11 is finally here, with all its new clean design looks with its rounded edges on Windows, better virtual desktop support and the ability to run Android apps. Widgets are back and Windows 11 is able to take advantage of the new performance hybrid architecture such as found in the Intel higher-end Alder Lake processors. But what if you don't meet the strict requirements? Surely an old Intel AMD CPU from the last decade can run Windows 11. Surely we're not left out in the cold just yet. Well, the answer is no, not just yet for now. And if you intend to put Windows 11 on a PC that does not meet the requirements, you're going to need to follow these methods and steps to make that install work. First thing you're going to need is an 8GB USB stick or bigger. You're going to need to download the Windows 11 creation tool. You can download an ISO and use Rufus, but we're going to use the MIDI creation tool. Step through the tool and select USB install. Continue through all the prompts until the install is made on the USB stick. Once you've made the Windows 11 install on your USB, you'll need to download our Windows 11 TPM Bypass tool. You can get that from our website. We'll have a link down in the description below. Once you've downloaded that tool, you need to extract that and put it on the Windows 11 USB stick. Best to be putting that in the root folder on the USB install for Windows 11. Now you're finished with that, you're ready to put your Windows install USB into that old computer of yours. Today we'll be using a humble Core 2 Duo with 8GB of RAM and 128GB SSD from ADATA. Now if we can get this to run on a Core 2 Duo, you shouldn't have any problem with a system that's newer. Anyway, that's our theory. Now when you're booting your computer up, make sure you hit the button to bring up the boot menu. This was F12 for my PC, this will probably be different on your PC. Once you're inside the boot menu, you want to select the Windows 11 USB that you made. This might be hiding in a hard drive menu or even the removable drives menu. Wherever it will be, you need to go and look for it if you can't find it. Once you've selected the correct boot option, you'll be greeted with the new Windows 11 logo. Now on the Core 2 Duo, it took about 10 minutes before it showed the loading circle. So be prepared, it could take some time on some of the older and slower systems. Now, if you're worried about Windows 11 being a bit slower to boot, don't worry, that is going to be disappearing once you got the installation done. It's just the installation media is a little bit slow to load. Once you're in the Windows 11 install, start selecting all the options that you would usually do. After a while, you'll get to this screen. This PC can't run Windows 11. Now, this is the point where everyone gets stuck with all the systems, but not us today. Now, all you need to do is Hit Shift F10 and that will bring up Command Prompt. Go to where the install drive is, most likely on D drive, because that's where it was for us, and check the directory by just typing DIR and you should see w11tpm.bat in that folder. If not, you gotta keep looking. Now we've located the batch file that we copied from the Offbits website. Now all we need to do is simply run w11tpm and type in space new, just like we've done here. Now it should say the operation has been completed 
four times over. This is for each registry entry that was made into the Windows registry on installation. Once you've got through this successfully, you're pretty much right to install Windows 11. So you can close this down or just multitask out of it and hit the back button on the Windows setup window. Then this will take you back to the last option. Just hit next again and it will go past that screen we got stuck on and we'll actually get into installing Windows 11. From here, just follow all the prompts and click on the things you need. We're doing a custom install and we're gonna be deleting everything on this drive. So we're gonna remove every single partition so if we just hit next, Windows will look after all the partitioning. Now you can do that manually if you want, but it's a lot easier just to start from afresh and just let Windows handle all the hard work for you. From this point, Windows is gonna be installing its software onto your drive and this is gonna take some time. Fortunately, we've sped this up, so this is gonna be a lot quicker for us to watch today. You're gonna get a couple of reboots, so don't worry about that, but eventually you'll get to the final part of the Windows 11 setup. The next lot of options is really up to you. You can pretty much hit next all the way through here. We did change a couple of settings here and there for our own preferences. Now it's worth noting that we did see that Windows 11 looked like it required an email address to hook up your account to for the user. This is good in some ways that it's gonna sync all your settings with online, but on the other hand, it is a problem because you need to be online. Though there may be a way around this, we just don't know if there's a way to do this or not. If you do know, feel free to leave some comments down below on how to get around this. At this point, we are finally set up for Windows 11. Now this has been set up on a Core 2 Duo E8400. So I'm pretty confident that this will work on anything newer than an E8400. You just need to make sure you need a dual core CPU and four gig of RAM. And on top of that, I would recommend running this on an SSD drive. Now we did check out some of the CPU performance stats and compared it to Windows 10. Now we have added some patches from Inspector to the install of this version of Windows, as much as the Windows 10. We also disabled Windows Defender on both operating systems, this giving us the raw performance with nothing holding it back in loaded memory. In the benchmarks, first up, we ran 7-zip, and in 7-zip, the test did show us the biggest difference in the results favoring Windows 10. With Windows 11, the old Core 2 Duo E8400 performed 1.6% slower in the multi-core scores and 2.73% slower in the single core. In CPU ID CPU Z benchmark, we saw Windows 11 giving a 0.7% increase in multi core performance and a 0.3% increase in single core performance, leaving very marginal differences in the benchmark between both operating systems on this CPU. But it did favor Windows 11 by a fraction. Finally, in Cinebench, the humble Core 2 Duo E8400 performed 0.6% better in Windows 11 over Windows 10. Now wrapping up this video, yes, Windows 11 can run on older systems that don't meet the required trust, trusted platform module prerequisite of version 2.0. However, we do wonder how long this will be the case. Now, there are a few other problems with upgrading to Windows 11 with an older system. For starters, here is a list of video cards from Nvidia that are not supported currently in Windows 11. So, this is basically showing that anything from a GeForce 400 series Fermi based card or higher can run and is supported in Windows 11. Now, from what I've observed from Team Red, traditionally they don't support cards as far back as Nvidia. Now, I also don't actually know which cards are and are not actually supported by AMD in Windows 11. So if you do know that, please feel free to leave any comments in the comments below. Now, you probably still can run the video card with the Microsoft basic display driver, but there will be little to no acceleration, and that includes in 2D operation tasks, and that will affect how your operating system feels when you're using it. So, the last thing I'd like to say about this bypass is yes, you can run this at the moment on this older Core 2 Duo system, but we don't know what Microsoft has in mind for changes down the track. In saying that, it is possibly that down the track, Microsoft may release updates that raise the bar on CPUs that can actually run Windows 11. Be that the operating system may need more resources, Possibly even it may require the CPU to support newer instruction sets that are currently and will never be present in older CPUs. But for now, we are good and hopefully it will remain just like that. 
So on that note, we're going to leave it there. Thank you once again for watching us here at The Offbit. Now I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters for their support. Now if you like this video and you'd love to see more of our videos, please hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button. That really does help us here to make more videos here at The Offbit. Cool. Well until next time, we'll catch all you guys on The Offbit.